For this card, I'm going to be making a card for coffee lovers and I'm going to be using the coffee time stamp set along with the coffee time die set as they coordinate and I can cut elements out once I've stamped them. But first I'm going to be using the floral doily stencil. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I've got myself a DL craft card base here. I have opened it up because it's easier to work with and I'm just going to stencil kind of uh, two thirds of the doily onto the front of my card. Now I'm actually going to do this with texture paste. You could do it with ink as well. So I have a palette knife. I'm just going to smear that through the stencil, making sure to press down quite hard to get it into all the grooves. Now it's better to use too little paste rather than too much to start with. And I have taped down my stencil as well, just to make sure there's no movement while I do this. Because the last thing you want is to get it moving. So if you place your texture paste through the stencil where you want it to be, and then work at lifting up the excess, and that will help you to see if you've got any gaps or any areas that you've missed. Try to go in all different directions as well. There we go. So I've gone through my stencil. I've tried not to get any over the edge. I've just gone up to where the score line is in my card. And now I'm just carefully going to lift the stencil up along with the tape that I've got holding it down very gently, trying not to smudge anything. And we have a beautiful effect on the card base. What I need to do now is just put that aside to dry for a few moments. So now our doily is dry, we can add some stamped images over the top. I'm going to stamp these, the coffee cup, um, the croissant, the sugar, all of these actually. Stamp them, colour them in. But I'm going to stamp them onto craft cardstock because um, that way it just gives it a, a more of a vintage look. It's really, really pretty. So I'm going to peel the stamps. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing one and then I will whiz through the others. So onto craft cardstock. Now a really good way of making sure that your craft cardstock matches your craft base is by actually taking a second card base and using that the cardstock from that so you know that they match perfectly because craft does come in lots and lots of different colours and different shades. So I'm going to stamp this directly onto the craft moving a little bit around the edge so I can die cut this out because we have the coordinating dies there that's really lovely and then I'm going to take some pencils now I'm going to do a a nice deep red I think for the cup and you'll be surprised at how nice it is when pencils go onto craft cardstock they really do show up quite vibrant on here so I'm just going to colour in quite um, roughly not worrying too much about where I'm going as long as I'm staying within the lines um, I did a bit too much there so just take my erase this is the great thing about using watercolours as well as you can erase some of the image if you put too much colour down so just colouring at the edges there and then I'm going to take my water pen, pen here, water brush, and just blend out that colour. So that has come up a little more vibrant with the water on. So over the darker parts of the pencil and then dragging it in to the lighter patch in the middle. This will dry again. It will dry a little bit lighter once that water has evapora evaporated. It will leave the colour behind. There we go. Now I always have a piece of cardstock to hand just to take the excess colour off of my brush because I don't want that going on to the next stage. So the next stage is for me to find a white pencil, which I think this is, and going over. Now I'm not going to water this down. I'm going to just leave this as white pencil. It is a watercolour pencil, but if I added water to it, it would reduce the opacity 
I want to keep this as bright as possible. Um, it is making the black lines a little less obvious, but that's absolutely fine. We can still see what it is that's underneath there. Make that nice and bright. And then a little tiny bit of colour just on the coffee beans and the leaf in there. There. So I'm going to die cut that out and then I'm going to repeat this with for the other images that's in the set. So the uh, the cup of coffee or the mug of coffee, um, the croissant and the spoon of sugar lumps. So I'll just die cut this. I'm going to use some foam pads to place my die cuts on. Nice thick foam pads that have lots of dimension. There's one. This is absolutely perfect for any coffee lovers out there. You could um, also create this card for people who love tea, um, who just love breakfast with the croissant. Um, it's entirely up to you, but I think this is a lovely sort of hello, how are you, just because kind of card. So it's the croissant there. And then the little spoon of sugar. I'm going to have to really trim down a foam pad for this one, nice and thin, because it is very dainty. So pop that just behind there. I can place that in front. So I've got my elements on there. The last thing that I've also got is a sentiment. So the sentiment is just stamped, life happens, coffee helps, and that's included with your um, stamp set there. So I'm just going to tuck this so it's coming out from the rest. And again, I'm going to use some foam pads for this. Just popping them on the back there. So everything's lifted off. And then with that craft cardstock, you get this drop shadow underneath, making it look really dimensional. There we go. So there's the finished card with the beautiful doily that's been stenciled in the background. And then the stamped images as well. And you can have more than one of these. You could have a couple of different cups if you wanted to. That would be really fun.